looking at supply chain management and how cost control can contribute to revenue performance. I'm joined by Philip Morris, Chief Executive of Nelson La Rochelle, a procurement services company that specialises in tactical cost reduction. Welcome, Philip. Thanks, Alistair. Well, let's start with what do we mean by supply chain and why is it important? A supply chain is the string of activities required by an organisation to deliver goods or services to its customers. In a production environment, it focuses on the core activities required to convert raw materials and component parts to finished goods. But it applies equally to service environments where staff are the main focus of the services being provided. The supply chain is important because it has a direct effect on an organization's overall performance. It needs to align closely with business strategy and core needs. From a cost control perspective, it's estimated that companies with extended global supply chains have between 80 and 90% of their costs tied up in this way, while increased complexity caused by global sourcing, omnichannel distribution and widespread markets means that effective supply chains are essential to smooth operations for all sizes of business. Okay, and, and um, okay, we talk about cost. What's the relationship between cost control and revenue growth? Yeah, this is probably the most important relationship in business as it determines the level of profits that will be made. Revenue growth is, of course, brought about by increased sales, whether that be to new or existing customers. But increased sales usually come at a cost, both in terms of direct inputs like raw materials and labor and indirect inputs like marketing, logistics, administration and the such like. Profit is, of course, derived from revenue after taking account of these costs. So the ability to control them as revenues grow will determine the level of profits that ultimately will be made from these increased revenues. OK, makes sense. And I guess another obvious question and today, businesses, supply chains get longer and longer. How do you protect yourself from supply chain failure? Yeah, that's um, that's a very good question. I mean, it depends to an extent on the nature and complexity of operations, but I think there are probably five main activities to consider. Firstly, stockpile inventory where appropriate, both of finished goods and raw materials or their equivalents in the service sector. Secondly, consider diversifying the supply base. Thirdly, develop backup suppliers. Both of these will prevent an unhealthy over-reliance on a limited number of suppliers. Uh, fourthly, manage product demand to prevent excessive stock buildups or stockouts, and this may involve managing seasonal patterns, forecasting, identifying lead times, streamlining order fulfillment, and so on. Uh, and fifthly, strengthen the core supply chain by, for example, developing relations with suppliers, investing in technology, and using data to drive improvement on a continuous basis. Okay, quite a few options then. And there are. I suppose, I suppose one of them is buying cheaper. Is cheapest always best? No, no, that's, that's a, a point that's often made, but supply chain is primarily about creating value. I mean, obviously price is a significant part of this, but quality mm. of product and service is also absolutely fundamental. A business should look for the most competitively priced supplies that it can find that are fit for purpose, taking into account all of its needs. I mean, Anyone, Alistair, can find goods and services that are cheaper, but it's a real skill to maximise value in the supply chain genuinely and on an ongoing basis. And many organisations simply lack the resources or expertise to do so themselves in-house, which is why specialist third-party companies such as ours exist. Sure. I, I think we have a family motto, buy cheap, buy twice. And I, I guess that fits, fits <laughs> Very true. Business. And then finally, what, what impact has, has um, COVID-19 had on on um, Supply chain yeah, globally. I mean, that, 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 that's, that's a great question and one that's on everyone's lips at the moment, certainly in supply chain circles. I mean, the pandemic has exposed the fragility of global supply chains and led to a reevaluation of the decades long just in time philosophy. There was already, frankly, pressure on the uh, supply chain to, to shorten due to technological developments like automation and 3D printing. But I think there'll now be a greater focus on linking supply chains with wider industrial policy. The recent shortage of semiconductors has highlighted the importance of this. There'll also be a greater, uh, an even greater focus, I think, on resilience, but without encouraging protectionism and without compromising the supply chains of raw materials like lithium, crucial for the development of low carbon economies. We'll see strengthened transatlantic cooperation to boost supply chain resilience and both the US and the EU, I think, will try and reduce their dependency on China heavy supply chains. 
The pandemic has also encouraged reshoring, which involves returning production back to a business's host country as a means of improving resilience. And this issue was recently highlighted by the blockage in the Suez Canal. Yeah. But I think companies are unlikely to rush to leave places with good markets, such as China, because they want to maintain a presence in these markets to access domestic consumers. So this impact may be less than many are predicting and may be primarily regional. And finally, I think that greater diversification of supply chains is also likely globally, but this is not straightforward and will probably be considered hand in hand with greater regionalization. Okay, no, thank you. That's, um, I think you've crammed a lot of information to that five minutes. So, so thank you. Uh, appreciate it. So thanks, it's my pleasure. My thanks very much indeed. Thank you to Philip Morris uh, from Nelson La Rochelle. Um, and, and to those people watching, uh, for more tips on business growth and uh, revenue generation, visit my YouTube channel or look at my webpage, revenueworks.uk. Or, or and, in the meantime, let's keep on growing. Mm-hmm.